With great power comes great responsibility. While there isn't one right way of doing branching in Git, there's certainly a lot of wrong ways of doing it. Welcome to this video on Git branching anti-patterns. We're going to talk a little bit about the anti-patterns that you should avoid with Git. Now, you know, it's no surprise that Git's branching is fairly simple. It's flexible. It gives you a lot of flexibility in terms of being able to create multiple branches, the flexibility of being able to commit uh, changes, um, have the social experiment pull, pull request. Uh, but at the same time, creating a lot of branches to shove unfinished work isn't really a, a pattern that you should go with as well. Um, you know, this kind of uh, usage of Git will lead you into a lot of technical debt that, that you may accumulate over time within your product. Um, so first, let's look at the first um, anti-pattern for branching within Git. You know, we've got a team. The team has some user stories within a sprint that they want to get done, but they've just started using Git and they think Git lets them do more, so they're going to create more branches to do more work in parallel. And as they do that, they have one branch per, per feature, and then for each of the tasks that they start off, they create another branch for topics that they're working on. And in the end, at the end of the sprint, they're left with hundreds of branches that have bits and bobs of code written up to complete tasks for features. And on the last day, when they start to merge the changes back, code reviews flag issues, you know, merge cause conflict. At the end of the sprint, nothing's delivered. This is a classic example of using Git branching to create more parallel work streams and then paying the price of not being able to roll up those changes uh, in time uh, to deliver the features that you're committed to business users. The second most common ANSI pattern with, um, with Git is uh, it's more of a communication and trust issue. You know, you've got a bunch of developers in the team and one developer doesn't like talking to the other developer. Uh, you know, the classic example of Adam says John's code is awful and breaks all the time. So rather than work in the same branch uh, for the feature with him, I'm going to just create a separate branch for myself. Um, you know, you're just kicking the can further down the road there because when you start to integrate the changes back from your branch into John's branch, you're still going to pay the price of integrating those changes with the so-called awful changes from John's branch. Rather than kick that can forward, you know, utilize the social uh, pull request workflow to help John understand better coding practices and bring him along on that journey. The third most common anti pattern with uh, Git branching is shifting priorities. Uh, you know, it's fairly easy to create branches and uh, people get distracted with, uh, with work um, and priorities constantly changing. Therefore, they may kickstart a piece of work in a branch and then suddenly they're told that they need to now fix a bug in production, so they'll create another branch, start working on it, and then something else uh, bubbles up in the priority order, so they now have to work on that. And in the end, they're left with a lot of branches with unfinished work. Now, rather than go down that route, I would encourage you to define a minimal viable product and attack that end goal uh, by committing that code and shipping that into production rather than accumulating unfinished work in several branches. Um, I mean, this anti-pattern is mostly driven on the back of unclear goals and shifting priorities. It's more of a management thing than anything else. But again, you know, don't use that as an excuse to pile up unfinished work in branches. Git is very powerful, and it shines when you abide to certain principles. For example, when you commit early and often rather than accumulating changes, when you use a proper branching model that works for your teams. For example, being able to use Git hub flow if you're shipping often, or Git flow if you're driven by a release model, uh, it, it generally tends to work well. Uh, basing your branches on Scrum tasks rather than product backlog items, uh, deleting branches after your merge is complete rather than stacking them up, uh, having a, a proper vetting model like continuous integration to compile your code and run your unit tests against the branches is a good policy, um, leveraging pull requests for code reviews and, and bringing that social collaboration between developers, and feature flags, you know, a, a brilliant design pattern to help you break away from uh, s joining up releases with code changes. Feature flags ultimately allow you to ship your changes c covered behind feature flags, so they're not really exposed to customers, uh, but that ultimately allows you to ship often and ship early. Um, you know, Git, Git works brilliantly. It's very powerful, provided you leverage it in the right way.